What's going on guys and welcome to the last Wednesday video that we posted in 2020. Today we've got a banger lined up for you. I've talked about coding before on the channel, but today we'll be bringing on an expert to share with you his experience in baseball as a data analyst while showing you some of the projects he's completed and offering advice for anyone just getting started with this stuff. This special guest is a good friend of mine, Sam Bornstein. Sam and I spent time together at the University of Iowa as student managers, and he's since taken over the lead data analyst role for the team. He graduated this past spring with a degree in business analytics and is currently working towards his master's of science in business analytics. If you've heard Sam before, you've most likely seen his work creating the Hawk dashboard or as the most read blog contributor on the Simple Sabermetrics blog. Sam's going to touch on a lot of stuff today, but let's start with his story. As we do with every guest, I asked Sam to tell us a little bit more about himself. What got him to where he's at? Yeah, I started at Iowa my freshman year. I interviewed during my orientation into that fall, that summer. And as soon as the school year started my freshman year, I was there uh, at the facility helping out with on-field stuff, more so setting up for practice, playing catch with pitchers and everything that someone would envision a student manager in college baseball to do. And then I sort of realized in the middle of my sophomore year that this really wasn't something uh, I excelled at, wasn't something I was particularly interested in and my focus shifted towards the analytics side of the game and I stepped off the field and went into the office uh, more frequently. As I shifted into the office focusing on analytics, I started to develop a, a technical skill set, picking up some skills in coding, learning about how to manage data and uh, learn more about the technical side of baseball and what's important. So with our program acquiring several player development technologies, there was needed to be someone that was involved with intaking the data putting it in one such location and preparing it for research projects. This was really the beginning of the analytics department founded at Iowa. And then going into my senior year was when we really started the analytics department. It was the unofficial official start. We brought in three new student managers to work with analytics only. And these data analysts worked on research projects on a, on a daily basis while also helping out of practice with collecting the data and facilitating that information down to the coaching staff and the players. Same time, I was working on developing Hawk Dashboard, which is Iowa's internal information system that houses interactive player profiles, post-action reports, and statistic leaderboards for all Division I baseball. This program really helped centralize all the information that was circulating around the Iowa baseball program and allowed for our analysts and other student managers to work on independent projects that were designed to improve player performance and in-game decision-making. Fast forward a year and the analytics department has doubled in size from four analysts to eight analysts. This has allowed for some really impactful projects, including quantifying swing decision scores, developing a pitcher similarity score, optimizing fastball location from vertical approach angle, and many more, which you can find on the Iowa Baseball Manager's blog, which put out weekly blog posts this fall and more to come this spring. My favorite part about this entire segment is the bit near the end where Sam touches on the role of data analysts in baseball. You only have so much time to make an impact on your team, and you can either spend that time collecting and cleaning data, or you can spend that time analyzing it. The first portion is definitely essential, but it's not the area that you can make a major impact in. That comes when you're able to spend time researching and analyzing that information for the team. Next, we dive into Sam's experience in coding. And this portion of the conversation is broken down into a couple parts. First, we start with how he began to learn to code. Then, the advice he'd offer for those looking to get involved for the first time. And finally, we wrap it up with the benefits he's noticed about using code for his program. Let's start with how he learned. Yeah, so I think my experience teaching myself code was unique to, to myself and, and not something that a lot of people have done. So I, I learned without structure, whereas most people learn with structure through classes, uh, whether that's in their schools or online with resources like Data Camp or other websites that have curriculum. But I think what I did was I, I started with no experience and I did a lot of the learning on my own, which isn't typical or the easiest way to do things. But I do think it was a valuable way to learn because I forced certain aspects of coding on myself. So if I wanted to start a project, I would learn how to do the code along the way, which I think it's backwards in a way, but then once I started to take classes is when the structure really fell into place. And then a lot of the the syntax with the code, a lot of the rules within the languages started to make more sense. Next, 
I asked Sam to share his advice for those looking to begin coding. If you're someone who needs structure to learn, then I recommend websites like DataCamp, LinkedIn Learning, the Analyzing Baseball Data with our book. But I think if you're someone who doesn't need as much structure, I would recommend Learn by Doing. So what that means is to have an end goal in mind and along the way, answer your questions through Google, a website Stack Overflow where you can post questions and see other people's answers. Maybe that's through YouTube, which is also a structured way to learn, but just digging into the questions on a micro level with uh, the end goal in mind. And finally, I wanted to hear about the benefits he believes learning to code brings to an organization. Really what code does is it makes your life easier. I think that's really the overarching theme of why someone would want to learn how to code. Uh, code really allows you to work with big data rather than in Excel, and it creates processes that can save you time in the future. So you can create reproducible code instead of having to do it over and over again in Microsoft Excel. And, and you can do all this stuff in, in Excel, but it really ties your hands of what the capabilities are. For example, if you were to download 20 spreadsheets, CSV files from whatever data source you desire, and you want to put the 20 spreadsheets together, it would take you about 10 minutes in Excel to copy and paste them all into one spreadsheet. But if you were in a programming language, you could do that in less than 10 seconds with three or four lines of code. Automating your processes with, with reproducible code is what allows your team, your group of analysts, more time to work on research projects. One aspect of baseball analysts' job is collecting data, but the, the less time you spend collecting data, the more time you can spend analyzing the data and really impacting your team. So we covered a lot here, so let me recap my main takeaways. Coding is simply creating automation among the processes that you already have in place as an organization. That could be through any number of things, but at the end of the day, it's about making your life easier in the long run. As teams begin to collect more and more data, it becomes even more beneficial to have a systematic process for collecting and analyzing that information. And the more time you can spend analyzing that information, the better. Next, we're going to take a look at Sam's pride and joy, Hawk Dashboard, and take a look at the epitome of automization utilizing an R-Shiny app to house all of his team's data. So although it's a proprietary tool, Hawk Dashboard is something I've been very transparent about in the past on my Twitter page. Hawk Dashboard is Iowa baseball's internal information system that allows players, coaches, and staff the ability to access interactive player profiles, post-action reports, and statistic leaderboards for all Division One baseball. Hawk Dashboard was a culmination of several projects that our analyst team worked on to create a whole dashboard that allowed the coaches and managers access to this whenever they would want. The benefits include, most importantly, automation, which allows more time for analysis and uh, eliminates wasted time on menial tasks, copying and pasting graphs or tables to create reports. This dashboard really allows us to analyze what we care about. It houses several projects that our team has, has completed over the past two years and really is a never finished product. I spent the whole summer creating this a couple of years ago, and the automation is really what I think is the biggest benefit of it. So. It eliminates time wasted doing menial tasks, whether that's copying and pasting graphs or tables or spending too much time sifting through spreadsheets. We have custom tailored reports to set our own KPIs. To give you an idea of Hawk Dashboard's capabilities, I had Sam break down just one section of the app. The most common report that Hawk Dashboard generates is a rap soda report for our pitchers. This bullpen report takes a spreadsheet as an input and creates this page based off the code put in place. It summarizes each pitch's metrics, shows the pitch movement plot, location plot, and a violin plot to show the distribution of spin efficiency. Finally, there's a spot on the report for players and staff members to put comments to assist with the feedback loop. Analyzing all of the data that we talk about on this channel can be very time consuming, but learning to code allows you to spend more time focusing on the things that matter to help make a serious impact on that team's performance. Before we wrap up, let me toss it back to Sam to share with you where you can follow his work or get connected with him for any questions. Thanks, Jake, for having me on. For anyone interested, you can read my Simple Set Metrics blogs in the link below where I write each month about baseball analytics and how to code. You can also find my personal information in the description with my Twitter, my LinkedIn, and my Medium blog. Thank you, Sam. It was great sharing your perspective of the way analyzing baseball data has impacted your career. And thank you to all of you who stuck around till the end of this video. This won't be the last video posted in 2020, you'll be seeing a few more populating this weekend, but this will be the last one that I've edited. So thank you all for another great year. I'm really looking forward to another one come 2021.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.